Yeah, street. Yeah, you already know what it is, man. Yeah, okay. They said big kids street. I wanna be like you. Wanna walk, wanna talk, get my knee like you. God damn. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy Sean Ford, aka Big Kill Streak. You can check out my music on my other channel at Big Kill Streak. But that's only if you want to. How's it going tonight, y'all? Or today, or whenever you end up seeing this video. I um I'm just trying to stay consistent and continue to post and continue to bring y'all some entertaining stuff to watch because it entertains me and I just want to show y'all the things that entertain me so that the things that entertain me can entertain you if you understand what I'm saying um, I haven't gotten the chance to make like like a shorts video because usually I make a shorts every I guess you could call it milestone for right now but I just want to thank everybody for uh, 300 subscribers and we're on our way to four and uh, after we pass four we're gonna be on our way to five and once we hit five we will be able to monetize. Ooh, I'm excited. Um, and, you know, just just start making this something that I can support my family off of. That's what I'm aiming for, at least. If you can identify with that feeling, and I know you can, then uh, subscribe, like, and uh, do all that other good stuff that YouTubers usually say, but I don't really like to say because... I don't want to be like everybody else. I digress. Tonight we're going to be watching some uh, some more shotgun content because that's one of my favorite weapons out there. A nice hefty shotgun can get most things done. Whether you're talking birdshot, buckshot, or slugs. And uh, that's what we're going to be taking a look at. Some crazy looking slug. I don't know what's going on with it. Like I always tell y'all, this is the when when I'm watching something, it's my first time watching something because we're watching it together, you and me, me and you, you and me, me and you, together. We're watching for the first time. I don't pre-screen most of these videos. I'm pretty certain most of them are watchable, or else they wouldn't be on YouTube to begin with. Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. If you want to call me stupid for not pre-screening my videos, fair enough. Um, but without further ado, let's get this thing started. We got the craziest looking slug you ever saw. Oh, damn it. Hello, this is Jeff of Tell Flare Mouse. We've got another interesting experimental slug to show you, this time from a viewer named Brian Graydell. 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 Now this is a Greedle. steel slug made Greedle. from a nitrous canister, but filled with some interesting materials. Now Brian sent a box just chock full of different slugs, and a lot of these just vary in weight and design. And some weigh huh. 27 grams, some weigh 57 grams. As you see, we have a lot of variations here. Some are a round nose, some are a flat nose, some are a hollow point. Some are a hollow base, some are a solid base. Damn. They are beautifully made, but it's still a loader's nightmare to try to work with all those different variables. But fortunately, Brian sent eight that are exactly the same. They are a hollow base or bud, uh, steel jacketed with a lead weight of some sort inside. And this is what it looks like. And again, the workmanship is just really nice on these slugs. Now this is where the center of gravity is. They're pretty nose heavy. And these might work pretty well through a smooth bore without any spin at all. That'll be interesting. Huh. These are one inch in length or 25 millimeters. But the issue here is the diameter. That's pretty long. 0 0.710. And I prefer a diameter of 0.675. Since the bore diameter is 0 0.730, this only gives us 10 thousandths of an inch or a quarter of a millimeter between this slug and the barrel. Come on with all the math Close. stuff, man. I don't know. I'm not good at math. Any kind of steel on steel contact and possibly damaging a barrel. Now, normally when people submit slugs to us to test, they make them 0.675 inches. This way we can use a Sabo that is 30 thousandths of an inch thick or about the gap of a spark plug. I think this I saw this. Diameter, and it allows the we might be, we might, we might really take a look at this. Using 
almost any kind of material and we don't have to worry or maybe about I'm just mistaken what this looks Brian like here emailed back and forth trying to resolve I swear I saw, this saw a video where somebody was shooting that like coil looking thing material. it's about 15 thousandths of an inch thick and we'll make a sabo out of that it's still a pretty tight fit but at least we have Teflon between the steel slug and the barrel now now with any type of hollow base Teflon slug, you have very little bearing surface and with 10 to 12,000 psi of chamber pressure, the wad can get shoved into that cavity quite easily. And the solution I found that works really well is the wet toilet paper plug. We take the wet toilet paper slurry and just pack it in there. And then in a day or so, it dries out and is very light and almost doesn't compress at all. It's very strong material and it's just simple and cheap, like me. We'll use the FS12 gas seal and on top of that, a couple of nitro cards just to further protect that gas seal from damage. Huh. And for our powder charge, we'll use 30 grains of steel. Hey, that looks like a crack pipe. <laughs> now, steel is the name of the powder, and honestly, it's not <laughs> my favorite powder. It's really limited to... I thought he meant limits, literally, one and a half, literally ounces, steel. Real heavy so it's the name of the... Uh, if you try to use it for lighter yeah, I was loads, confused. it often won't even ignite. But it's a slow-burning powder that is designed to prevent barrel damage from using steel shot. Now before I roll crimp it, I'll slip those hmm. Teflon Sabos in. There's three of them with a little gap in between. That'll give us a little growing room space. But as you can see, there was a whole lot of thought and planning behind the loading of these things to make them safe, to make them functional, and hopefully stable as they fly through see, the air. See, these people will be like... Finally, the thing I haven't addressed yet is the shape. These walking shape gold mines. Like naval torpedo. Now, I, I say these people, I mean like, the shape doesn't really affect the say the world goes to shit, obviously ammo production will go down to like almost zero, but guys who really have that kind of knowledge, anyway, let's get out and test these out. I'm thinking about maybe going to school for that, learn how to, how to My make name is ammo. Mike and I'm from United Ammo, and this is Brandon. Brandon What's going on, on Mike? A bulletproof vest underneath this shirt, and today we're going to be experimenting with an experimental 12 gauge bunker buster slug. We're going to set this round off with this 12 gauge here. It is an experimental round, so we're gonna to try to use as much precaution as possible. We're gonna use a uh, Kevlar ballistic panel as a shrapnel blanket, and we're gonna remote set this firearm off. Okay. Damn, did it hit? Completely miss. Now the that looks We didn't get a chronograph reading, but we still got a lot of good information from this high-speed camera footage. And we actually got a really clean launch on this. It was just too bad it missed, but uh, you can see the condition of the Sabos, the Yeah, you can see like the uh, fiber wads and the slug itself. The slug is flying straight and true. No spin at all, not even a wobble. There doesn't appear to be any type of safety issue. I'm David, hmm. I'm gonna give it a shot. First time shooting shotgun. What's up, Dave? Is it? Yep. Oh my gosh. A revolver guy. You're gonna be a shotgun guy by the end of the day. Ah. Whoa. Ooh. Did you get a reading? <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Number two, the slug again is pretty stable. Just a little bit of a yaw there, but overall pretty good. Ah, I missed it. Uh, I, I can't see it. Decent. He just shot a little bit high, but the windage was. I was looking at the wrong piece of. We saw just stuff. a tremendous impact on that Kevlar vest. And that's usually a sign that Knocked the slug hat off. actually caught the projector. If he wearing a spam hat, hat I just I just noticed. We could see the slug had actually <laughs> passed through that Kevlar vest and is tumbling off into the background. Oh, I see. Went right through him, I guess. Wow. Hell no. Nah. Great accuracy. It penetrated and went straight through the vest here. Wadded up a bunch of Kevlar. Went straight through Brandon. All the way through to the other side. Damn, Brandon. Right, right here. Right there's the hole all the way through. Man. Wow. That's still going through. I'll, I'll be honest. I can't see that being stopped. 1275. Wow. Yeah, I was aiming right about here and this time it dropped 
quite a bit for me. Um, other than that, it still made it clean through the wood. It went through the vest once again, but did not come out the back. And then you found it, right? Yeah, I found it just a couple feet away, just on the other side of the table huh. here. And this is what it looks like. Here, let me hand it to me and I'll get a close up of that. You can see it's something a little dinged up on the nose. Huh. Little little mushrooming, but but for the most part, still. What did it hit? So it made it dent like that. But uh, didn't mushroom out much. That, that's a that's a penetrator there. And the impressive part was that it still continued to bust through this whole entire piece of wood. Yeah, I didn't even slow it down hardly. Then through one panel of Kevlar. Yep. I see. As you wow. see, that bunker buster had no problem. I can't even imagine getting hit by something like it looked that. Like it was made out of styrofoam. In fact, it just hardly moved the wood block at all. What's next, David? Well, we have this uh, pink cow. We thought it was a pig. Thought it was a pig at first. Started looking at it. Ain't it that thing yeah. from uh, Back of it again? <laughs> <laughs> Full of water and frozen. He's melting in the sun. Yeah, it's hot gotta, out today. We gotta hurry up. He's already gonna kill over. Okay, let's get in. It. It's all right. filming it. Okay, I'm rolling. Put that thing squarely in your shoulder. Okay, you good? Yeah, I'm ready. Oh, damn it. He I fucking missed. Nothing. Okay, you good? Yeah, I'm ready. Come on, man. Eh? Wait, did he hit it? Well, I never triggered the it's high camera because I thought he just missed. I was expecting a massive reaction, this thing blowing up. So we'll shoot it one more time. Did he miss again? Hey, get some marksman out there, man. Did he miss it? Two holes uh, kind of around its neck there where he hit it the first time. Oh, I see. But I was about to again, say. A really energetic. What is that shit made for? The slug sort of just slipped through that thing without any hydrostatic shock or anything like that. But the good news is David will be able to patch that thing up and we'll use it again someday. It's a great target. <laughs> you know what time it is? It's time Man, to get the lead out. I want some oatmeal. <laughs> that sounds stupid, but we're gonna go go with it. You okay, go. we got the lead plate now. We're gonna hit the lead plate with this bunker buster. Bunker buster. Oh no, y'all looking like y'all might need some bigger targets, homie. Oh, I was just about to say. Now, another reason I. I was just like about to say it is this safe. Huge cloud of heated gases, which obscures the imagery on the camera. It's almost as bad. I was as just as about to say, is that safe to shoot? Get a pretty good. The damn uh, I guess it's a piece of lead. Kind of float back at us. Not really a any danger there. I thought of any slug that might wow. penetrate the lead plate, that would have been it. But nope. As you can see, wow. it did do a uh, pretty good number on it, about halfway through the entire distance of this plate. Still created a lot of damage. Yeah, but I thought we'd have a hole there. Did you find the slug? Yeah, we found the slug. It decided to come back and say hello to us. And that's the slug after it hit that lead plate. Wow. And it hit nose first <laughs> and everything. You can see that. You're going to say, now we're going to shoot it through full rifling and see if it makes it better. Now we're going to shoot full rifling. Speak up. Come on. <laughs> I'm not good at that part. <laughs> You're good right there. Just see it. OK, go. Now we're going to shoot it through full rifling. And see if rifling makes everything yeah, better. Makes Come on! Everything better. <laughs> wow, I just went right through it. Damn! Didn't blow up. Still no evidence that rifling makes anything better, at least in this case. But we had a more accurate shot. But I attribute nice. that to having better optics and that nice red dot. It's a lot easier to aim than trying to. You can see it ricochet off the ground in the back. Only. But we can really see how that torpedo shaped projectile 
really efficiently traveled through that joint compound, hardly disrupting it at all. And it's quite a contrast Damn. from last week's test of the steel tornado. Take your time, no rush. Okay, hit it. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so we have a, a kind of a small temporary wound cavity in there. It went right through there. The block hardly slowed it down at all. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, he shot it a little bit low just because he's not used to the red dot on that. Usually you have to aim about an inch of above where you want to hit at that range because of the uh, bore axis but uh, I think he did well David went straight through the block right into our Kevlar vest and you recovered it right David there it is it says uh, oh, okay it's a little bit mushed but um, more than, not a big energy dumper these things are a, a penetrator and especially when we shot the that bag of uh, joint compound it just we expected that to blow up into pieces but uh it just went through there without hardly disrupting it at all yeah, right through just a different type of projectile just made for it'd probably be great for a bear or something you want yeah. or a dinosaur or rhinoceros whatever endangered species oh, you're doing that day yeah. <laughs> rhinoceros yeah, wait, that's Pterodactyl. We're not survived. Uh, I want to thank you guys for coming it's out. Thank you for it's having me. Yeah. You find shooting a shotgun for the first time? Well, the first time? Nice yeah. to meet you, you gotta fellas. You got to buy one now. Most likely. I'll see <laughs> if I'll come back. You're going to enjoy I'll it. probably yeah. be back to it's the channel. It's going to be a lot cheaper than shooting that 500 mag. Uh, yeah. A lot cheaper. A lot cheaper. Yeah. <laughs> and probably easier on your hands, too. Oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> Now David's placement on the gel block was actually quite good. It was in a nice clean area. Damn. A very small temporary wound cavity, only about three inches in size, in fact, but they extended the entire length of the 16 inch gel block. I guess if we learned one thing today, it's that that hemispheric nose like the torpedo is pretty efficient going through different types of fluids. And really it's not much different than a non-deforming sphere going through the same fluids. And just as a comparison, this is the bot fly. It it didn't expand or anything either, but Damn. we definitely saw a way different reaction in the gel block than we did with the bunker busters. And a quick thank you to our Patreon supporters out there. At the early part of this year, things were looking really good, and I actually started telling folks to, hey, cut back or eliminate your Patreon pledge. We're doing good now. Well, I probably spoke too soon but I like to be honest with everybody let people know what's going on in the last month YouTube has really put the screws to us and a lot of people are getting unsubscribed they're not getting their video the videos in their notifications and the views are down by oh I haven't seen them this low in 10 years but thank you guys for hmm. sticking with me we'll see you next time well there you have it people this is um, our first time taking a look at this channel uh, I think it's pronounced how flutter mouse i'm gonna see about putting it probably like right here or somewhere over here where you can see it a little easier um so y'all can go check them out if y'all want to maybe watch the video without my little head in the corner or whatever um it's up to you um that was a lot of fun man that thing looked uh pretty damn crazy as far as um what when you're talking about like slug rounds in a shotgun um i mean i don't got much more to say it was a lot of fun uh, i like the channel I like the video we'll probably be back on the channel one of these days the next time they put something crazy up and um yeah i just want y'all to have a fantastical day and night thank you yeah, I got this cash, bad bitch with fat ass Money in my stash, I'ma make it stack Shorty let me smash, oh shorty let me smash She gon' suck me while I'm driving, I hope I don't crash I feel like the flash, I'ma run it back fast I just got this mad